Thank you all so much for joining this evening. Uh, this is the American Promise uh, preview of the American Democracy Summit. And this is a big annual event that's coming up in September. And this evening we'll be talking about the event, giving you a, a sneak preview into some of the content that you can expect there, as well as some of the logistics of the event. My name is Christopher Kerr. I am the National Field Director with American Promise. So I work on some of our state campaigns and coordinate with volunteers on national projects. I've got my email in there and I'll follow up with everyone here uh, as soon as this meeting is over so that you have my contact information as well as uh, some of the content that we're going over this evening. With me this evening is our Deputy Executive Director, Caitlin LaCase, who joined the organization earlier this year and has been uh, fundamental in helping to um, bring us to a, a new level at American Promise. We're really excited to have her on board and have her join us this evening. And uh, Caitlin, do you want to join and say a few words? Yes, thanks, Chris. And I didn't realize you asked me for a headshot, but I didn't know I could do a, a fun, a fun headshot like yours. You'll, I'll need to to find one for the next the next uh, meeting that we do. Um, I have a cheap <laughs> so much. <laughs> we might need to, I might need some props. Um, one, I just want to thank you for leading this call and thank all of the amazing volunteers and supporters who are here this evening to hear about uh, the American Democracy Summit and why we think it's so important. I know I am personally so excited um, for this conference. I always, uh, you know, I find myself so inspired and um and my energy renewed after convenings like this, getting to meet people who are doing this all around the country. I mean, so many of us were, were here talking you know, online, but there's such a different energy when you can meet in person and brainstorm and talk about what's working well in one state versus what might be working in another state and really bring our best practices together. And not just with our American Promise team, but with organizations and, and grassroots activists from around the country. And it just, I, I am so looking forward to that kind of learning environment and the energy that I know it will bring. Um, so that's more more personal for me. I always leave those feeling just really excited for, for what's to come. Um, and then with American Promise, it's really important for us that we have a, a, a tremendous, you know, showing there because it's an, an incredible opportunity for us as an organization to meet other people who are already you know, aligned with our mission, but may not know yet how they can plug in with the work that we're doing here at American Promise. And so, you know, all the folks on this call, when they come to Los, um, Los Angeles, they'll be able to talk with the other thousands of of organizers and volunteers from around the country there and really try to bring them and help us bring them into the American Promise family. And so it's just a really, really incredible opportunity um, for all of us. Did I cover everything, Chris? That was great. Thank you so much, Caitlin. I think uh, everyone at American Promise is really excited about this event. Um, I've never been to one personally, but I was uh, asked to lead this call. So I really took it upon myself to dive into all of the content that was out there about the event and look at previous events and look at all the speakers. And I'm so excited to share some of this stuff with people because there's some great content prepared. And um, yeah, thanks for thanks for chiming in and sharing your uh, what you're excited about for the event. I'm gonna jump back into the slides now. And as I mentioned at the beginning, please feel free to post questions in the chat throughout and we will get to those questions at the end. So we're gonna cover a few things tonight. Uh, got the this slide deck, which will take about half the call and then we'll open it up for discussion. Um, we'll give you a quick overview about the event so you can know what, uh, what we're talking about here. We'll go over our American Promises goals for the event what we hope to get out of this, um, some key takeaways, things that you yourself can gain from attending the event. I'll give you an inside look at some of the speakers, some of the breakout rooms, the various content and entertainment that is prepared <clears throat> for the event. And then we will discuss event logistics. So where is, where is the event being held, um, hotels, pricing, all that stuff. And, uh, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. 
So let's jump right in. I wanted to start with this quick video that was put out by, uh, by uh, Represent Us, who's one of the primary organizers of the event. These are from previous summits. The last time we were together, 14 months ago, I was so inspired and I had no idea that our movement to unrig the system would score more victories than any time in American history. So even if it's your time, your talent, or your treasure, we gotta put something on the line for the causes of good to unrig a system for ourselves, for future generations. But we have an obligation in our time. have to show up in order for these things to change. Lobbyists, special interests, politicians do not have the incentive uh, because they're currently operating in the status quo. What this represents is that that word impossible now means that I'm possible. It means that unrigging the system is possible. What you're hearing is the sound of a movement because when we unite together, then we have more power. And we all have to be engaged, conservatives, liberals, Republicans, Democrats, independent, in fixing the problem. We have to come together. We have to put our country over part. Are you ready to rack up more victories? Are you ready to put country over party? Are you ready to unrig the system? Thank you. Thank you, folks. All right. I wanted to share that clip because, um, first and foremost, I think that this is an event to go to be inspired to get excited about this work um, that can sometimes be really challenging and we're often in the trenches, but um, here's an opportunity to really see what is possible, what we're working for and to come together in a shared environment. So I thought that that video really encapsulated that and I wanted to share it with folks. This is the event description. It, the American Democracy Summit was formerly the UNRIG Summit, so there have been a few of these so far, and it's the premier right-left event to solve America's political crisis. It uh, brings people together from dozens of organizations, thousands of people across the country, and it's for a variety of issues. Uh, so, you know, money in politics will be one of the primary issues that they, will be discussed there. Um, but there will be a variety of various electoral reform related issues being presented on. <clears throat> we'll get into some of that stuff during this presentation. And there'll be a, a long list of various speakers, trainers leading breakout rooms, and some of the entertainers are incredible, um, activists, educators, academics, and all coming together to talk about building a better future. So what do we hope to gain out of this? Why are we putting so much effort into organizing this? American Promise is the top sponsor this year at the event because we really believe that, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is a, a critical to our movement, what we're trying to accomplish. <clears throat> so here are a few things that we are looking to do during this summit. <clears throat> Number one, we wanna elevate the For Our Freedom Amendment. Um, you know, we, this is the worst kept secret in politics and we want to make it a household term. Um, this will give us an opportunity to present our um, platform to a wide audience of people who are very engaged in this movement. And so really a one of a, a kind opportunity to elevate the For Our Freedom Amendment. It also helps us expand our movement. Like I've, I've mentioned, there are going to be a lot of people here. These are people who are already involved in this movement who are uh, trained organizers, volunteers, activists, people who are passionate about this, um, and maybe just haven't had an opportunity to be introduced to American Promise and what we're trying to accomplish. So we see this as a great potential to go and network, to recruit new people, to join our movement, for you know gr grassroots leaders to grow their chapters and um, meet new people, grow new ideas. 
uh, and, and expand the movement. And uh, to that note too, is to learn from others in the reform space. This is something that I'm personally very excited about during this, uh, during this summit are all the breakout sessions. There are gonna be some of the, the country's greatest organizers, political activists, people who have led some historic campaigns, um, high level government officials, uh, uh, educators, Harvard, Harvard educators who have a lot of experience, a lot of uh, uh, tools to share. And so I'm really excited to go to become a, a better organizer. And I hope that you will be um, interested in joining us in that process. What can you hope to gain from this event? What are the key takeaways that you can expect for attending this summit? I think the networking is something that is really <clears throat> underrated at some at an event like this. You know, this this movement, it requires all of us to kind of come together to share ideas, to grow our movement. and um, share resources, and we just really haven't had an opportunity to do that in recent years. So um, this is like the premier democracy reform event of the year, and it will have most of the big organizations working in this field. So you'll have an opportunity not just to uh, be introduced to new organizations and new organization leaders, but also other volunteers uh, and, and other chapter leaders, maybe from your state and um, really grow what you're trying to do. And then I touched on this a little bit are the trainings. I'll talk a little bit about some of the breakout rooms that you can expect, but some of them look really interesting. Um, some of them don't aren't really related to what we're trying to accomplish, but still look really interesting. And then there's a lot of them that are campaign finance related, they're um, campaign related, learning new tr new skills, learning more about AI, for example, and um, learning from some of the, the big campaigns over the last year. We are really hoping that folks will attend so that we can collaborate because we don't have often have an opportunity as American Promise um, organizers, volunteers, staffers, board members to come together in one place. And um, this is an opportunity to do that. The, the full American Promise staff and board will be in attendance. And we would love to have our volunteer leaders and volunteers there so that we can have an opportunity to, um, to bond as a group and, and learn how to, to better work together. And then inspiration. And I, um, this one, I, I didn't really realize how much of a factor this was going to be when I started researching the event. But just looking at some of the previous content and some of the content scheduled for this year, I can see that this is definitely a place where you could go to really be moved by, by this work, to be feel you know, invigorated by this work and, and leave with a, a sense of passion and excitement and energy um, that can sometimes be drained when we're constantly campaigning. So let's get into the programming because this is the interesting stuff. They've broken it down into a few different sections. So there's going to be the main stage and this is where they'll have the, the big name speakers and they'll do um, lectures, think like TED Talk style uh, conversations about various issues. They'll have panels of experts discussing, breaking down issues, um, answering questions from the audience. And uh, I'll show you some of the speakers in, in just a second. There are some really impressive names on the list, some exciting, um, exciting speakers that we'll get to see. Um, the breakout rooms I've talked a little bit about. These are a series of different trainings that will be uh, run by various experts in different fields. I've, I've got a few of them that I'll preview in just a second, um, but there are some really, really exciting ones um, that I, I look forward to highlighting here. And then connect. So they also highlighted this, um, the, the benefit of camaraderie, of coming together, of networking. Um, that's a huge opportunity and they leave a lot of space for that throughout the week. Uh, in fact, American Promise is, we, we do these Freedom is Brewing events. A lot of the folks here have been to them or helped organize them. Um, they're more informal educational opportunities to discuss the amendment and the work we do, typically at a brewery. Um, but this, in this uh, example, we're doing a Freedom is Brewing at the summit, but we're running the coffee table. So we're brewing coffee. And this will give us a great little table to discuss what the For Our Freedom Amendment, American Promise, to share our content, meet new people, and, um, and get folks signed up to join our movement. 
I just snagged a couple descriptions of some of the breakout rooms that I wanted to share with folks because I thought these looked really interesting. Um, Harvard professor Danielle Allen, who's a really well-known democracy expert, ran for governor of Massachusetts. Um, she's going to be leading a breakout room on bridging ideological divides, something that I think is needed now more than ever. And certainly in the um, For Our Freedom Amendment movement, we know how important being um, nonpartisan is in bridging those divides. So I'm really excited to get to see this uh, breakout room with Danielle Allen. Um, the triumph unveiled behind winning see, uh, scenes of winning campaigns. Uh, this is exciting too. They'll bring in some of the campaign organizers from some of the biggest campaigns around the country from this previous year. And we'll get to learn from those victories, what strategies they implemented and what kind of tips and tricks they have to share. And then this one is a similar kind of structure. It's bringing in more campaign experts, organizers, uh, people specifically in the campaign finance reform movement, and they'll talk about the strategies that they implemented that allowed them to be effective. So these are some um, in incredible opportunities to learn from experts in the field about new, um, old, all ways of organizing. American Promise is the top sponsor this year at the American Democracy Summit. And as the top sponsor, we'll be leading a series of panels discussing the For Our Freedom Amendment and um, similar issues. So here are some of the, the discussions you can expect. I think these are gonna be really interesting. The first one is on federalism. Um, federalism and local action is a key part of our strategic plan to amend the constitution. Um, so this will be a deep dive into this issue of federalism and why it's so important to our strategy. The next one is about the Constitution and the amendment eras. So, um, you know, in times of division in this country, in times of rapid technological change or political violence, Americans have come together to pass amendments and, to, and they, they often happen in these little eras or bursts where multiple amendments get passed in a short period of time. There were three following the Civil War, four more in the, in the 19 teens, and then four more between 1961 and 1971. Um, and you know, we believe that we are uh, seeing the beginning of a new era of change right now. And we'll talk about you know, this issue of money and politics and why the, the time is right to address it. We'll talk about our work in various states. We'll hear from a bipartisan group of state legislators who will um, describe you know, how important it is to put partisanship aside, put voters first, and uh, hold the congressional delegation accountable. So we'll get an inside look from some of our um, state legislators who have worked to advance this movement. And then we'll do a, a deep dive into the amending the Constitution, and we'll talk about our strategies, tactics, and methods. Um, so that's another great breakout room that folks will want to catch. Uh, you know, how can we create the conditions that are required for such a, a tall order, the proposal and ratification of an amendment? And um, you know, that we'll, we'll get into what it means to be aggressively cross-partisan and bridging divides, um, and you know. Uh, the, just, just the strategies that we are implementing to pull off this amazing feat. Here's some of the great speakers that you can expect at the, at the summit. Um, Jocelyn Benson is the uh, Michigan Secretary of State, who has a unique insight into how elections are, are run. We've got uh, two different presidential candidates on there, Andrew Yang and Lawrence Lessig, both ran for president, both of them on mostly issues of electoral reform, Lawrence Lessig completely on the issue of money and politics, and he's a, a Harvard professor and a, a very bright mind. Um, I don't know if folks know who Ed Helms is, but he's a very funny comedian and actor. He was in the Hangover movies, he was in The Office, and um, he's been a big part of the Represent Us platform and an outspoken advocate for addressing corruption in government. Um, Danielle Allen, who we talked about earlier, she's on the board of American Promise and a strong supporter of the amendment. Um, let's see, Desmond Mead, uh, he's got a great inspirational stories and activist, uh, formerly unhoused person, was um, late listed as one of the top 100 most influential people in Times Magazine. 
uh, in the world just a few years ago for the work that he's done as an activist. So you can really see the quality of speakers that you can expect on the main stage during the event. I pulled a couple of quotes from some of the speakers because I, I thought that would be interesting. Uh, Danielle Allen, we've talked about, um, passing the four-hour freedom amendment is necessary to secure the health of our democracy, time to get the job done. That was from Danielle Allen's candidate pledge when she ran for uh, governor of Massachusetts. She signed the American Promise for a Freedom Candidate Pledge. And then we talked about Ed Helms. This was a little more direct. Politics is pretty messed up right now. Uh, I think we can all agree with that. So now event logistics. And uh, hopefully this will answer some of the questions you have about uh, attending the event. The dates are September 27th through the 29th. It'll be all day 27, 28th, and then it'll wrap up uh, at 2 p.m. on the 29th. Uh, the event takes place in Los Angeles. It's at the Magic Box Convention, which is in downtown LA. It's a huge, beautiful convention center. Uh, there are a list of hotels on the, the website that I'll provide to you. American Promise staff will be attending, will be staying at the Moxie downtown LA. And we're hoping to get blocks of rooms for uh, volunteers who would like to attend. It's not for sure yet, so I shouldn't promise um, yet, but we are hoping to secure that. So feel free to contact us before you book your hotel to see if we can get you a room without paying the fees and um, the additional fees associated with the room. The ticket pricing is $325 for the three-day event. Um, that The tickets I'll, I'll show you are at the link that I'll share with you. There is an income adjusted ticket, which is a quite generous and goes for any income under $70,000. They drop the ticket to $105. And if you use American Promise discount code, and please do, because it's how they will know who's attending the event with American Promise. But if you use the code AP Delegate, you will get 20% off your ticket price. And that also applies to the income adjusted ticket. And then I wanted to announce a scholarship for young Americans. We have a grant that is uh, specifically dedicated to sponsoring a small group of young Americans to attend the event. Um, I believe that that was focused on people in the greater LA area. But if you know a young person who's interested in attending this event, um, who's interested in American Promise, please let us know and I will connect them um, with the, the proper organizer to inquire about the scholarship. Before we wrap up, just a couple of resources here. Again, I'm going to send this out in an email, but there is a website, the American Democracy Summit.org. It's got all of this information and more um, videos about the event, videos from previous events, the full list of speakers, breakout rooms, um, information about hotels. It's an all encompassing resource. So uh, check that out. Our, our discount code to, so that you don't forget it, AP Delegate. And then a link here to schedule a meeting with myself. If you still have questions after we wrap up this presentation this evening, um, please, by all means, schedule a meeting with me. Again, I'll, I will send this link around, but I'm happy to coordinate with anyone who um, has any questions. And uh, speaking of questions, now is the time. So I'm going to stop our sh screen share here. And uh, if folks want to raise their hand, if they have a question, and I will call on them. All right. One second, Nick. Where'd you go? Oh, Nick, your hand was up but dropped. Did you, do you have a question or did did you uh, accidentally put your hand up? Uh, no, no, no. I saw that someone had answered my question in the chat. So the okay. grant is up to 20, 21, 22 years old. Yep. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions from folks? If we're all then. Well, Chris, I was just going to say that um, since you're getting married next week, you can send my email address around too, so people can reach out to me um, so they don't bother you 
on your week of nuptials. Um, though I know you would still be, re you would be do it. You know, you're so excited about this. You'd probably be responding, but we want to allow you to enjoy your, uh, your, your week. So feel free to send my email around. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, exciting times in Chris's life. Um, I have uh, one other slide that I wanted to show you, and I did see a question in the chat that I'll also get to, but um, I wanted to uh, show folks that if you can't attend the summit, but you do want to get involved in the work we're doing, um, that we have uh, the Michael Mineta, our VP of Outreach and Advocacy, encourages you to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one volunteer orientation on his calendar. Um, so it's the calendly.com slash Mike Mineta, um, and I'll send that around as well. But uh, for anyone who is interested in getting involved, please schedule that one-on-one because -on -one, we'll be happy to show you all the stuff that we're up to. All right, one second, I'm going to get to some of the, the hands that are up. Um, so Alan, I'm going to add you to the stage. Hello, everyone. Uh, I actually wanted, uh, so Chris invited me on to <clears throat> tell about my experience uh, previously at Repos at, at the Unrig, and it's tremendous, and I forgot that I did meet Maria there. Um, and in doing that, I was going to also address uh, Benjamin's question, and his question is, if we're all in the same boat, why don't we coalesce all of our organizations into a single one? And that's a brilliant question, and if I can field it by also saying why it's important that you go to the Unrig Summit, uh, or ADS now, uh, it's because we're not. We, we we all have different ideas on what the fix is. So represent us is all about unrigging. It's about fixing, but they have different ideas on what would work. Um, democracy reform is a very broad topic, and it includes things like independent uh, redistricting commissions, and it includes things like ranked choice voting, or you know what they call <clears throat> sometimes final four, final five voting, um, open primaries, uh, which is what they now have up in uh, um, Alaska. Uh, it includes democracy dollars. It includes uh, longer windows for voting, more mail-in balloting. There are so many things that organizations, these wonderful organizations are doing to reform the democracy space and make it more democratic. We don't all agree. Uh, and so our issue, we believe, and I, I believe, I'm vested in this, our issue is the one issue that makes those other issues possible. Because I love the idea of open primaries. I love the idea of ranking your votes and having instant runoffs. I love the idea of independent uh, district redistricting. I don't think that uh, the candidates should choose their voters. I think that the voters should choose the candidates. Um, but right now, that's not the case. And so all those wonderful reform ideas, they will, in my opinion, they will not be as successful unless we can stop the billionaire's preferences in all things political. If the billionaire class, the investor or the, the, the donor class doesn't want something like say ranked choice voting, then it won't materialize. And even if it does, it can be undone through a state ballot measure or through legislative uh, work you know, within a state. This one reform issue, in my opinion, this money in politics, it restores to the people that true vote, that true voice in our democracy. And if we like something like democracy dollars, like they do it in Seattle, then the Washington legislature then passes that. And then they, they get to do what um, they call, you know, uh, uh, laboratories of democracy. Unless we can do the money and politics thing first, unless we can get disclosure, uh, limitations on who can donate and tr transparency, we're not in the same boat. We all see different things. So my, my long-winded uh, request is go to uh, the ADS, elevate this issue, explain to people why this is important to you and why this has to happen. And then we'll get more people involved and in that way we'll, we'll be successful. Does that answer the question, Benjamin? That is great, Alan. And, and you've attended one of these events, right? I've attended two, and I'll say this, I'm so excited. I just found out today that, I think it was today, Ben Harper is gonna be there. Um, uh, there's also, uh, I don't know if we're supposed to say it yet, but Weezer might be there. Uh, there's gonna be some great artists. So the 
Unrig Summits, the ADS now, uh, it's, it's a huge event. It's so empowering. It's so inspiring. You get to meet some of these famous people. I got to have a wonderful conversation with Lawrence Lessig, um, Andrew Yang. These are great people and they're there attending just like you and I. And everybody's kind of on a similar page. And it's just so empowering, so invigorating, so inspiring to be there and to see how many people are trying to reform this country and make it better, make it more uh, you know, inclusive. So I can't stress enough, if you have the means to get there, get there. And they do great things, like they do great bands, they do stand-up comedy, uh, they, they, they serve great food when they're serving food, and there's usually an after party that's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to go have drinks with Jennifer Lawrence. So uh, I would say, from my past experience, absolutely, if, if there's, by hook or crook, make your way to LA. Great. One last question. What specifically are you most excited for at this year's event? Which aspect? Yeah. Seeing you all there. Seeing you all there and like raising this issue and talking with people. Um, Andrew Yang uh, has three different parties kind of joined into the Ford party. And Andrew Yang believed in a lot of the reforms, but he didn't really elevate the money and politics thing until he came to our NCLC last year. And then after hearing Representative Dean Phillips talk about it, he made that a priority. So when you guys show up in LA and you guys talk with everybody else that's there and you collaborate and you, you, you show them how important it is, uh, you may inspire an Andrew Yang or, you know, somebody else to, to take this and, and, you know, help us make it happen. So I'm, I'm most excited about seeing you all there. That's great. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your experience with the, with us tonight. I'm going to remove you from the stage and invite up Marie Henselder Kimmel, the New Jersey chapter leader for American Promise. Hi, hey, Chris. Hi, everybody. Um, so I was at the uh, Nashville um, Unrig Summit also and was volunteering, uh, worked the table, um, participated. We did a lobbying, a lobby day uh, or how to lobby your lawmaker. We did a demonstration. We had about 50 or 60 people come to our breakout session for that um, and got to attend a lot of really good sessions. Uh, Braver Angels had one at the time, Red to Blue. Um, interesting, uh, Wolfpack was there and, and did sort of a play-by-play a -play of what their interest is in money and politics. It's really interesting stuff. So I had two questions about it. First of all, um, do you know what breakout sessions American Promise may be providing in terms of education and training to the rest of the attendees, and and actually, then the other is a um, is a, more of a comment than a than a question. Well, I can address the question first. So I I don't know the exact specifics. I do know that of the four panels that we shared, the last one is more of a breakout session, and that's focused on our strategies of amending the Constitution pretty vague. So we're still, I, I'm not part of developing that training, but as soon as we have some more information, I'll certainly share it. I, I know we're going to be talking about some of our um, state campaigns, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and sharing that with folks. But um, as we have more information, I will share that with you about the breakout rooms. We have a, a web page that I'll send around and I'll, I'll drop in the chat here in just a second that has um, a, a description of the of panels that we plan to um, present on, and we'll continue to update that with more information as, it, as they develop. So my comment is this, and uh, you know, some pe people who have really been following the democracy reform movements may have recommend, recognized some of these individuals from the clips that you showed from um, Nashville, but among them were Katie Fahey, who was the, um, I forget what the name of it was, but it basically was the Michigan um, effort to get nonpartisan redistricting. She was the person who started a Facebook, like, I'm mad about this. Is anybody else? Join me. And they got it through. They got it through the Michigan, um, you know, a ballot initiative and got it through and, and then went on. She's now um, an independent voting. Um, I forget exactly the name. I get the email, the letter, the newsletters and whatever. So that was Katie Fahey. Desmond Mead um, was a leader in the um, re reenfranchising returning convicts. Um, convicts returning to citizenship and giving them back the franchise in, in Florida. He was a leader in that. 
the badass grandmas were there and they and I forget what state they're from. I want to say South Dakota, but that might not be right. But it was a very red state. And they um, went around and got all their grandma friends to be interested and get involved with a lot of democracy type um, uh, accountability and ethics. Um, sort of movements. So it was definitely grassroots. And my suggestion would be if we can find out which groups, because I'm, I imagine that they're going to try to really highlight the groups that are really doing a lot of work right now. If we could find out who it is, and then if we come armed or bagged with the information about the money that was spent against them, because we know like the U-Lines just spent uh, tens of millions against this this um, issue one in Ohio, and there's there's the groups them and others are going to be spending 50 million against the ballot initiative in Ohio to um, to get the uh, right to reproductive choice on into their constitution. So if we come armed with that information and say, you know, you're coming here to listen to what we want, and we think that this everything you everything we are all doing is very important. But unless we can counteract the U-Line's $10 million and the whoever it was that spent the money against the redistricting commission and the whoever it was that spent the money against reenfranchising the returning convicts and have some of that data, this is what the major obstacles were that they had to face that were from outside of their states or from billionaires that aren't affected by it. And this is what we're all facing. And if we can work on this together, and work on the money in politics, we can advance all of our issues. I think it's the perfect opportunity to get a little bit of buy-in from all of the groups because we really need everybody working a little bit on our issue along with whatever other issue they're working on. And if we could do that, I think we really could move our whole, our whole project ahead dramatically. So that's my suggestion. Yeah, I love that. That's a great idea. I think, um, you know, and that's a big part of what we want to do with elevating the, the amendment is to really get people on board with understanding that this is the fundamental reform that needs to happen before uh, we can really have progress on so many of these other issues. And, um, we are still developing the content that we want to share at the, the event, but I'm going to take this to the planning committee. And I would encourage anyone here who's interested in participating, if you want to attend the event and you want to also discuss what we're going to be doing at the event to engage with people and you want to be part of that planning process to reach out. We'd love to hear what your suggestions are and incorporate you in the, um, in the planning and advocacy part of that. Should we bug Caitlin or should we send that to you? <laughs> uh, Caitlin and Mike will be happy to respond to you next week and I'll be back uh, the week of the 20th. Well, congratulations, Chris. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm taking a uh, I'm, I'm taking a honeymoon in LA at the end of September. Great. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks for um, jumping on with us, Marie. Any other questions from folks before we wrap up this evening? Uh, I mean, we went over uh, quite a bit of content, but I will send around an email this evening with links to all the various things that we discussed, and then as soon as the recording is. Um, finalized and ready to send out. I'll also send that around. Uh, got a question here or a hand from Vicki. So I'm going to bring Vicki up to the stage. She's our Minnesota chapter leader. Hey, Vicki. Hey, thanks, Chris. And uh, as usual, I, I'm following up with, with Mar what Marie started. Um, my question was, uh, as delegate delegates for AP, are we going to be briefed on our messaging so that we can be consistent with everyone we meet. And, and as Marie was saying that all these people are working on such worthwhile causes and, and we need to say something like, Oh, I, you know, I agree with you a hundred percent, but we need to get money out of politics. And once that's done, I'm going to be working on that full time. So if everybody consistently says that to every different group and, you know, anybody they, they're networking with, I think that, uh, people will will really make a dent in it. So um, as well as, you know, a, a panel discussion or something on that to, to help bring that in. Because I always told my volunteers, work on whatever you're passionate about, you know, 90% of the time. But if you're not spending at least 10% 
on this, then you will never actually succeed in, in getting that other work done. So um, that'd be, you know, hopefully that's going to be a good theme and we can all carry that to whoever we, we speak with. Yes, it's a good point, and thank you for, for bringing that up. We were um, planning on, well, we had considered using a part of this time this evening to talk about that and really get into like what we will um, be hoping of our AP delegates, but we wanted to use this space more for um, just talking about the event and answering questions. There will be um, closer to the event, probably around the first, first week or first two weeks of September, a couple weeks before the event, we'll do another call with volunteers who are and, and with AP delegates who are attending the event to make sure that we have a united front going in there. Our talking points are the same and we're, we'll, we'll share at that point what kind of resources we're going to be sharing with people. Great. Yeah. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining us on stage this evening, Vicki. All right, any other last questions before we wrap up this evening? Really appreciate everyone uh, for joining us tonight. I'm, I'm super excited to, to hopefully meet a lot of you in LA in a month, um, get to learn side by side and be inspired by some of these great leaders across the country and to then go home and do some great work in our various states. So um, thank you all so much. Chris, before, before we wrap, I have, I have one question. Can, um, can we just do like a show of hands? How many people who are on the call tonight plan to go? That's a great call. So uh, you've got a raise hand button down below. If you can um, throw your hand up if you plan to attend. That's pretty exciting. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, that's super exciting. I am, I'm so looking forward to, to meeting you all and working beside you. And I am, a, a, besides next week, I'll be available to answer any questions and get you prepared for the event. Um, look, look for my email and uh, follow up if you do have questions. And, and again, thank you all for, for being here and for joining us for this important event.